Hey, everyone. We all know the psychedelic industry from an investment standpoint finished off on quite a bumpy note at the end of 2021. However, a lot of institutions are seeing huge long-term growth in 2022, and these are the key things to look for here in Q1. What are they? Find out now in our latest podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dales Report podcast. I'm happy to be joined with the CEO of Braxia Scientific, Dr. Roger McIntyre. How are you? Chad, great to be with you again. I know. We were with each other the first week of November in Miami. What are we doing? We need to get back into that warm weather, right? Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you immensely. We we, we, we got to. It was a great a great memory being on the boat, chatting with you. I know. Look, it's, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this winter and we'll get right back at it. What was your big takeaway from the conference? Uh, I know it's been a couple months since we uh, last uh, spoke with you, but and I know I've had a few people on with my podcast asking, but more specifically about you and your company, what was the big takeaway that you found over the two or three days that you were down there? Well, the big takeaway for me was that there is, in fact, a lot of interest and a lot of uh, ambition in the area. And I think that really is the theme, the theme that not just emanates but surrounded the entire meeting. In fact, the entire space over the past two years. Uh, yeah. I would say the theme going forward is going to be about implementation. Um, you know, I see a lot of parallels, quite frankly, between the electric vehicle market uh, and this mm-hmm. area. Lots of excitement, electric vehicles, lots of new entries, lots of very ambitious entries. But going forward, it's going to be about implementation. And you're going to see a lot of differentiation in our area. I use the electric vehicle market as, I think, a very uh, yep. appropriate metaphor for what is it's going to be the case for companies in this broad psychedelic area. Yeah, it's a good comparison. Uh, a lot of great data coming out, but most importantly, what a lot of institutions want to see is just the pathway about how you plan to get to point A to point B. Exactly, correct? exactly. Yeah, uh, I do want to begin. You recently announced last month uh, that you began the first Health Canada approved multi dose psilocybin clinical trial uh, through your subsidiary, the Canadian Rapid Treatment Center of Excellence. So, walk us through what this trial brings in terms of potential, I guess, on the drug development side. This is a big announcement. It's a huge announcement, and I think what it does is it really, uh, frankly, instantiates uh, Braxia Scientific. That's who we are, and that, and that is, is a company that is uh, really leading in terms of innovation, not just in terms of clinical care, but also innovation in R&D. And, you know, it's, it's a very important announcement. It's a historical announcement insofar as this is the first and only ongoing actively recruiting study health can approved as you said it's multi-dose for adults who have depression and that in itself yeah. has its own offering shed but there's actually a larger uh i think a larger infrastructural and also a larger um organizational offering here we had to put together the protocol we had to liaise with health canada we had to get the approvals we had to acquire the actual medication itself we had to train all everybody we've also in fact through braxia uh, uh, training institute. We've trained therapists to provide best practices in delivering this particular treatment, and we're engaged in a very rigorous randomized controlled trial. So this trial, which will be completed by the end of this year, will be the first trial yeah. like this in the Canadian landscape. And here's the part: we have, in fact, a infrastructure that can really be, really, you know, frankly, plug and play. In other words, we, in fact, have the infrastructure of the trained therapists. Braxy Scientific has the trained human capital. Braxia Scientific has the trained researchers where we can look at other psychedelic treatments. What that treatment is will be determined, but we're looking at a yeah. lot of other potential assets. So this is, in fact, an important um, development, not just in of itself, but, in fact, creating the infrastructure that, in fact, we believe will be populated by Braxia Scientific IP-capable psychedelic products. And, Shed, we talked about this in Miami, Braxia for you know, has been involved in ketamine-based activities, giving ketamine for depression, doing ketamine-based research, and we've done this for quite some time. So we, in fact, have now, if you will, retooled into this area of psychedelic. And I frankly have always talked about this. It's one thing to have that vision. It's a different thing, in fact, to actually implement. And we're the first ones and only ones doing this in Canada right now. So you being a doctor with a lot of years of experience, and you've seen a lot of things obviously related to mental health, where are we at with ketamine as a specific compound in this industry uh, versus other compounds? 
and maybe walk people through that are starting to learn this space more the importance of a multi-dose trial versus, say, something that isn't. Yeah, it's extremely important what you're touching on. You know, we have at Braxia Clinic, you mentioned CRTC is a fully owned subsidiary of Braxia Scientific, uh, four clinics in Canada. We have very high volume of patients who are receiving ketamine-based treatment. It's legal, it's effective, it's innovative, it's breakthrough according to the FDA. Um, and most people, the great majority of people, are going to require between four to six, if not more, treatments. Mm-hmm. At some point, uh, Chad, we're, we at Braxia hope, and of course the field hopes, that we will have a single treatment, just a one treatment, everything's fixed after that. Uh, that may be in the future, but that's not in the near-term future. So we need to have treatments yeah. that are what we call episodic. In other words, Braxia is developing episodic treatments, which simply means, in English, you take them in episodes. Like you take them for you know a few doses here and there. You don't take it every single day. This is what ketamine represents. But ketamine, as I always say, she has the first inning of the baseball game. There's oh, there's many different uh, these episodic, rapid acting treatments. But for now, ketamine is the only one's well established. We think that maybe some of these other psilocybin type derivatives and so on might be similar insofar as right. episodic and be able to be. Uh, you know, rapidly alleviating symptoms. But here's a key point around this. The key point around this is that for us, in fact, as an organization, an organization that is not just giving treatment in a high volume way, best price way, in an organization that's doing the research in this area, the experience of doing this has really refined our thinking, not just in terms of how we give it clinically, but refined our thinking on our protocols. So when we design protocols, and our protocols are designed at Braxia Scientific to look at psychedelic safety and efficacy, but to identify patients who are most appropriate for this type of work, this is truly an art shed. I've been doing this for a long, long time, 20 plus years of doing this, and it's that yeah. type of boots on the ground intel you need to do the studies with the highest quality to give you a better chance of a signal that's positive. Are there enough companies, and I I don't want to use a comparison, but do you think enough companies are making this a focal point when it comes to the proper training and the proper research that is involved uh, from from day one? You know, I can't speak to what the companies are actually doing, but I can speak to what we're doing. And what I can say is as follows, is that after 20 to 25 years of drug discovery and development that I've been yeah. working with, with large pharma around the world, I've learned that there is, in fact, a lot under the hood here that you have to be aware of. Uh, we know, for example, in psychiatry, there's a significant placebo response rate uh, the COMPASS trial was positive. We saw that in the uh, last quarter yeah. of last year, but there was a significant placebo response, which is still there. And what that means is, is that in our business is that you have to know how to pick the right patients. You have to have properly trained therapists. You have to have the right delivery, the right surveillance. Right. And the difference, shared between a treatment that is shown to be safe and effective, that receives a regulatory approval, and the treatment that fails is a very, very small difference. You know, they often say football, you know, is a game of inches. Uh, there's a very small difference that separates the, you know, the NFC champion from the team that's at the bottom of the league. It's the same in drug discovery and development. These are fine differences. And that comes down to the human capital, the infrastructure, the training requirements. And this is what it's about. And because we've moved away from what I often describe as sort of a fast food model of drug discovery and development, big scale, relatively modest in terms of the drugs that are we gave, the Prozac type drugs, they're not that effective, they're modestly effective. These are specialized treatments, ketamine and psychedelics. These are specialized yeah. treatments. Yeah. You have to know how to pick the right people. You need the right training. And this is what we're doing. I suspect this was part of what Health Canada considered when they approved our study. Yeah. That and the fact that you have a background with Big Pharma for 25 years. And I have to ask you, based off of that, there was an announcement made earlier this week that one so pharmaceutical company is getting involved in this space. Where do you see this going and it maturing here in 2022? Do you see an influx of announcements happening once the first one has now been made? And what's this do for the industry? Like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that where, where does Big Pharma get involved here in 2022? The, the, the categorical answer is uh, yes, insofar as Big Pharma is already involved in psychedelics. Big Pharma has been extraordinarily involved with ketamine derivatives, and there's been a variety of acquisitions that have taken place or ventures that are joint and so on. 
Um, uh, Braxia Scientific, uh, myself, have had uh, uh, ongoing conversations with large pharma, not only in the U.S., but Europe and Asia. And the message is clear, is that uh, there is an interest, there's an appetite for psychedelics. Ketamine yeah. has obviously a very different atmospheric. It's legal. There's already been mm -hmm. proven treatment that's safe and FDA approved. But now you saw the announcement you mentioned, I think, is a uh, early sign of what you're going to hear more of. And that is companies are interested. And now companies are interested. These companies are obviously uh, <clears throat> well informed of drug discovery and development. And frankly, the standard operating procedure of developing a treatment is going to be no different. There's best practices in how this is done. And this is, in fact, what's going to be looked at with respect to uh, investing. So Braxia Scientific knows that. We know that. We've done this for a long, long time. In my discussions with large pharma, it's very clear. We can, in fact, find assets, whether they're psychedelic derivatives, ketamine derivatives. Yep. They are extraordinarily interested in bringing this forward, as they mm -hmm. should, because obviously depression is a common condition, and the available treatments are not doing the job. There's a tremendous business case here. What are key things that you think your investors should look for pertaining to the trial over the next couple of quarters? I think the key things to look for in any trial, but certainly our trial, but all trials, is who actually is doing the trial? What is their track record in the business? Uh, what is, in fact, the uh, relationship they have with Big Pharma? Quite frankly, no product, Shad, is going to make it to an FDA approval without some type of larger partnership. It's just not going to happen. This is the way this works. Right. And then above all else, what are the centers involved? What are the centers involved in the clinical research? Is this being outsourced or is this in-house? So what Braxia Scientific has, we have our CRTCE clinics. And it's right. unique because we are, to my knowledge, the only organization that is engaged in providing psychedelics clinically for those who need them. But we're also, in fact, looking at R&D in our own patients mm -hmm. with hopefully mm -hmm. a view at some point we will have in fact a ip capable asset that'll be uh you know venture we'll have a joint venture with one of the pharmaceutical companies and moving it forward so it's a very unique situation you st feel strongly that you'll get that partnership one day obviously i do i do i really feel strongly and i have a reason to feel strongly you know we have in fact a long track record of doing it and i think that you know there's nothing more successful than success and we've had yeah. the success for a long, long time uh, in R&D. We've got, for example, uh, many antidepressants that are currently marketed around the world. We've played a key role in developing them, conventional. So that success, we think, is giving us the reason to be successful again, especially in this area. And I know there's been a lot of excitement. There's been a lot of uh, people, some who are relatively new to this space, and that's exciting. But what I would also uh, press as a point is that the guiding principles – of developing these treatments don't change. And I think there's even a special punctuation point on this that these newer treatments really, I think, invite the need for full comprehensive expertise. And I do it in Braxia has that. That's why I'm confident we're going to do this uh, it's successfully. Yeah, well, the conversations I've had even from back from Miami, institutions, they really like this industry and it's all yeah. based on the data that's being produced. Yeah. And I, I know, like, let's look at it. The end of 2021 was a challenging time for the industry from an investment standpoint, yeah. but I can't help but believe, and I'm sure you probably can uh, relate and agree with me. It's To me, it just seems like an incredible entry point opportunity for this industry from where we are right now, where we were before, even from a year ago. But if you can imagine... 12 months ago saying where we'd be at and would you get in obviously in this industry right now would be obviously an easy answer, which would be yes. But um, what do you think, you know, the overall year that we're going to look at and key points for the overall industry that we should look for? Well, look, I used the example earlier about the electric vehicle market. I, I think that's a great parallel because uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, excitement in electric vehicles. And I think you're going to see now a real emphasis on implementation. And I think that's where the obligation is now, the implementation obligation amongst the companies. Uh, and that is, can you implement what you are saying you're going to do? Now, yeah. Braxia Scientific has clinics. Braxia Scientific has clinics that we are, in fact, expanding our clinical footprint for people who are eligible. And Braxia Scientific is also, in fact, very much going to be completing our clinical research studies. So I think we really, uh, as investors, they need to look at implementation performance. 
And stay yeah. tuned. We're going to have a lot of uh, announcements in the very near term about some of these implementation performance uh, metrics. And I think that's what people have to look at. Experience and relationships, too, are going to be a big one as well. Absolutely. I think. But um, last thing I wanted to touch on, <clears throat> excuse me, you announced a $3 million private placement with uh, institutional investors. Uh, a job well done. Net proceeds will be allocated towards the expansion of clinics, certain strategic investments, and general working capital purposes. Um, although it probably was, it wasn't an ideal time to raise money, but does this get you to a place where you can make significant advancements in your uh, business operations? It sure does. And, you know, we, in fact, want to spend our focus over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll be implementing our strategic priorities the strategic priorities of Braxia Scientific are to increase the clinical access to psychedelics. And we have clinics. We're building on that through a variety of capabilities. The second, with respect to our strategic priorities, is frankly our brand. You know, we, people will know mm-hmm. our brand. They'll be able to very clearly differentiate our brand uh, based on not just the clinics but our R&D. And the additional capital is going to allow us to implement our R&D further. That is the psychedelic study that you've described but also additional work with ketamine and psychedelic derivatives that we're looking at. So this is going to be about implementation, implementation, and implementation with objective metrics. And that's going to be the focus for us, and this capital raise helps us towards those goals. Very insightful. like what I'm hearing, but congrats, obviously, on the trial news. And uh, honestly, wishing you nothing but the best here in 2022, because it looks like, you know, as much as it has been a bumpy ride, People, obviously, and I continue to communicate this, there's tremendous growth opportunity yeah. long-term for this industry. Completely agree. Absolutely. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy keep in New touch, Year, and I'll Chad. see you we'll in Miami. Keep in touch. Take All care, right. right. Thanks. Talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.